Hello everybody, today is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And today I wanted to make a video talking about bark collars. Dun, dun, dun. And are they good? Excuse me, are they good? Are they effective? Are they mean? Are they abusive? All that good stuff. So, um, I've made another video that will be after this that will uh, walk you through how I set up the bark collars that I use. So, spoiler alert, I'm for bark collars. But let's talk about it because if you're watching this video, maybe you've been on the fence and you're not sure. Maybe you're one of those people that have tried everything else and nothing worked. And so here you are and you're just like, I don't know anything about them. Are they useful? Is it gonna hurt my dog? All that good stuff. So I just kind of wanted to answer some of those questions, kind of talk through maybe some of the misnomers of bark collars and then um, talk to you about the appropriate way to use them and how to create the proper associations with the bark collar and your dog and you. So that's what we're gonna do. So offhand, our bark collars, abusive, cruel, mean, and the short answer is no, if you use them in the right way. If you use them the way uh, that I would recommend using them and setting them up, they are a fantastic tool to stop nuisance barking in your dog. Um, most, well not most, but a lot of people think it's mean because it's going to hurt my dog. And I want to talk about that. So pain, um, discomfort is one of the ways dogs teach other dogs what is appropriate and what is not. So a bark collar like this is mimicking that. So if you ever watch wolf documentaries or just like a pack of dogs hanging out, if one dog is doing something that's inappropriate, is too excited, too rough, um, too dominant, like whatever the case is, the dog that's running the show, the one that's in charge, is eventually going to use its mouth to stop that dog from inappropriate behavior. It's going to come over to that dog, it's going to bite that dog, and it's going to stop that dog from doing what they're doing. And it's willing to continue that process to teach the dog what's acceptable and what is not. So that is what we are mimicking when we use bark collars. So, and that is also one of the reasons why some techniques for dog training are great at teaching but they're not great at correcting. And what's fascinating to watch about other dogs is how they do both within a second. It's pretty, pretty fun to watch. So I don't think it's mean, I don't think it's abusive to use a bark collar on your dog if you're having a problem with nuisance barking. There's other things that we can use to help curb that behavior and stop that behavior. But um, what I find most people are dealing with is a dog that is obsessively barking, will not stop when they're told no, um, and it's disrupting their life. So it is causing them problems with their neighbors. It's causing them mental stress. It's causing them emotional stress. All of those things, I would say, is kind of like your dog is kind of being mean to you right? Because they're not respecting you and it's causing you angst. So I actually just spoke with a woman not that long ago that was kind of in that boat where she was concerned about losing her apartment because her dogs would not stop barking. And she had tried medication, collars, jackets, treats, all sorts of stuff, and it wasn't working. So my recommendation was this, okay? So Let's talk about how it works and the proper way to make associations with it, 
okay? So the way this tool works is it senses the dog barking with this little sensor in the middle and it administers a correction right after the bark. So it is precise and it is telling the dog your barking equals a correction. And I will continue to do that until you are quiet. That is essentially what a bark collar is doing. Um, and it's going to use stimulation slash shock to get that message across. Yes, there are um, vibrating ones. There's one that make a tone. This one actually does have just a tone feature. If you just want to try that and see if it works, go for it. If it works, great. Um, but um, what typically happens with a lot of those other collars is the dog just learns to just blow it off, right? So maybe the first time they're like, what is that? I don't like it. That vibrating is weird. Um, but after a while, they can just take it. Whereas a stimulation, especially these kinds that I use, are programmed to automatically go up in stimulation level if the dog persists, right? So it's essentially saying, I'm willing to go higher if you continue. So um, that is how they work. They go off the vibration from the throat of the dog, so this goes like on their trachea, it picks that up and it makes a correction. So the key to this, I think, is making a good association for when, when you put it on and when you take it off, when the dog is loud and when the dog is quiet. So that's why I want to talk to you about real quick. Um, and here's, here's how I do it. Um, I have a dog who's vocal. They, I've put them in their crate and, you know, I've left the room and the dog is barking, barking, barking. If the dog can't bark it out, which is a fine method, right? You just wait them out, let them cry it out and go to sleep. And over time, that works for lots of dogs. So I'm also not saying slap this on the first time your dog barks. You don't really need to do that. But... Again, I imagine you're watching this video because you've kind of tried all the other things and it's not working. So we're going in this um, example of a dog that's just continuing to bark, okay? So if this dog's living with me, he goes in his crate, I leave the room, the dog's barking, barking, barking. I open the door, I stick my head in the room, and I tell the dog, hey, knock it off, and I shut the door. Most dogs will at least stop barking to be like, oh, you came in. But I'm coming in to tell you to be quiet, and I shut the door. As soon as the dog barks again, sometimes I'm literally standing outside the door because I know it's going to happen. As soon as the dog barks again, I walk into the room, I turn this on, I put it on the dog, and I walk out. And I don't say a thing. Nothing. I just walk in like I don't even care about anything. I'm just putting this on. What I'm creating is the association that, hey, be quiet means be quiet. Because what will happen is I come in, I put this on the dog. I leave. The next time the dog barks, he's corrected from the collar. And over time, the dog associates, hey, be quiet with actually be quiet. So that in the future, I can pop my head in the room and say, hey, be quiet or hey, knock it off. And the dog's going to be quiet because he knows that this will follow through with what I'm saying. So I'm associating this to me saying, hey, be quiet. Okay, so that's key. That's the association that we want. The second thing that we want to do is make a good association when the dog is quiet. So what I'll do is once the dog is quiet, and there's really no like, matter of time here. You can kind of do whatever you want. But like, again, I'm taking worst case scenario. So let's say this dog is just crazy barker. He's finally quiet. I might wait like half an hour or something like that to where the dog is quiet. I'm going to come in. I'm going to take this off and we're going to go for a walk. 
or I'm going to take them outside and we're going to play ball and we're just we're going to do something fun um, and non-stressful, right? Because um, that's what we're trying to create is, hey, when you bark, you get corrected, but when you're quiet, good things happen. This is the same exact principle if you have a dog that like you put them out on the back porch and they bark to try to come in. It's the same principle. I'll open the door, I will reprimand the dog, tell them to be quiet, shut the door, and then I'm waiting for the dog to be quiet. Once the dog's quiet, then I let him in, right? So I'm making those associations that, hey, if you're quiet and patient, I know you're out there, I'll let you in, right? You don't have to boss me around and tell me that you need to come in. I am well aware that I need to bring you in, right? So that's what we're creating is those negative and positive associations. So don't bark, bad things happen. Quiet, good things happen. I have used this um, before with dogs that are like really like super vocal um, and it works great. And sometimes it takes a couple days. So like also just to encourage you like be patient with the process, okay? When you put the bar collar on the dog and they get corrected, it's a messy process. They don't like it, right? But just remember, you don't like them barking all the time, stressing you out, okay? So you're gonna give the dog stress by the remote and you have to ride that wave. You have to ride that wave, okay? Don't you go parachuting in there and take it off when the dog's getting corrected, okay? It's gonna blow the whole thing. So you have to ride the wave, put it on, they're going to get corrected. They're not going to like it. Some dogs will vocalize. Some dogs vocalize because it doesn't feel good. Some dogs vocalize because they're drama queens and it's really not that bad. They're just like, I'm a drama queen. I'm trying to get out of it, right? So you ride that wave until it's quiet. When it's quiet, do what I'm saying. Go in, take it off, and do something fun. Don't go in there and give them hugs and kisses and love. Don't do that because the dog's still a little bit stressed from being corrected, right? So you don't want to nurture that. What you want to nurture is a positive experience of being quiet, which is, hey, come on in. I take this off now because you're quiet. Let's go for a nice walk. Let's go play ball outside. Let's do something, right? So make sure you're making those good associations with the bark collar. So, in conclusion, this is a great tool. You should use it. You should watch my video on how to set it up and use it. And remember, you are mimicking another dog correcting your dog. So don't feel bad about the correction. You are speaking the dog's language, essentially, when you use this tool to tell them what is appropriate and what is not. Okay, so send me questions if you got questions. If you're like, you convinced me, Zach, I want one of these, then watch my video on how to set it up. I'll put links in there on where I get them. And happy training. We'll see you next time.